The view from high above Cincinnati shows the home team's gridiron as a center stage. The Bearcats' newfound leading man, speedy quarterback Zach Kolaris, is ready to star again. Yet look who's back. One-time Heisman hopeful Tony Pike. Can the country's number five team stay perfect against a perennial Big East power? Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime. The momentum just keeps building here at Nippert Stadium. Tightly shoehorned into the city campus and filled with loyal fans. Number five at 9-0 faces 25th ranked West Virginia. A critical game on many fronts. Look at the Big East standings and don't dismiss the fact that West Virginia is playing for a BCS bull berth as well. The league championship is going to come down to a three-team showdown since he hit West Virginia. They play each other to finish out the season, and the first showdown is right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside my partner, Rod Gilmore. We welcome you to college football primetime. Rod, it seems like no matter who you plug into this Cincy offense at quarterback, you get the same results. And now we get the predictable media and fan rumblings of a quarterback controversy. Yeah, but as far as Cincy is concerned, there is no quarterback controversy. When Tony Pike is healthy, he's the starter. Now, he's not 100% healthy, but we expect to see him tonight. They want to work him back in. But will he be the same guy we saw earlier in the season when he started six games and had 15 touchdown passes and only three picks? Well, in the month that he was away, this guy, Calera, stepped in and did an unbelievable job completing about 80% of his passes as a starter, has 10 touchdown passes, one pick, and has great running ability to match. Let's get right to the man blessed with the riches at quarterback. Our Quint Kesnick is with Coach Kelly. Good evening, Quint. Hi, Joe. Coach, how did you arrive at a decision this week in terms of your scarred and quarterback? Just the health issue. You know, Tony's not there yet. He's getting closer. There's a little bit of a risk if we play him, um, and we're going to do that tonight, but we think we can minimize that situation. Last week, your defense surrendered 45 points. How do you button it up? How do you tighten it up? Well, we just, you know, we got away from doing what we do. We've been extremely efficient in uh, just taking care of our business and uh, being assignment correct. And uh, we'll go back to that. I'm certain our defense can play, play well tonight. Thanks, Coach. Joe. Well, they better play well because in facing number 25, West Virginia, he got speed burners in key positions. But injury concerns with those playmakers for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Jared Brown, a quarterback, Noel Devine. At running back, and we'll have to watch them closely. Now, I saw Devine before the game going in warm up. He looked okay, like he was going to give it a shot. Jared Brown has to have a big game. He needs to run the football. He's been kind of uh, up and down the last couple of weeks, but Devine is the focal point of the offense, and if he can't go, they'll lose a lot of big play capability from that offense. Coach Bill Stewart now in his second full year at West Virginia. He shed the interim coach label the day after he led the Mountaineers to a Fiesta Bowl win over Oklahoma. Tonight, Rod, he's been playing up that underdog role, telling his team and the two of us, nobody is giving us a chance. Yeah, you buy that? I mean, this is a team that was the gold standard in the Big East up until last season. But this season, in playing Cincinnati, it's the first ranked team they have on the schedule for Cincy. They're going for history, trying to go 10-0 for the first time. West Virginia won the toss. They elect to receive, so Jake Rogers will be kicking off for Cincy, and Mark Rogers and the dangerous Tavon Austin back deep for the Mountaineers. And this is a good punch to the corner of the end zone by Rogers. So the West Virginia offense and senior quarterback Jarrett Brown, he patiently waited his turn for three years. He watched Pat White break every offensive record in sight. He's got a cannon for an arm, also capable of utilizing his speed with the fleet feet, although last week he did suffer a sprained ankle against Louisville. You know, Tess, he's also not quite been the same guy since he suffered that concussion in the Marshall game several weeks ago. Noel Devine in the backfield, the lone back for West Virginia. And Devine slips up 
That's a loss of one. Let's look at tonight's impact players brought to you by KFC. Well, this guy, Noel Devine, has the biggest impact. He's got a left ankle injury. Can he go and how long can he go? He's a thousand yard rusher and a big play guy. If he can't go completely, look for Jock Sanders, their top receiver with 58 catches, to go to the backfield a bit. And on defense, Chris Neal is the focal point of stopping any rushing attack. So second and 11. After the loss of one, on a handoff to Devine. And now they try to work it to the outside to Sanders, but the Cincinnati defense is quick to get right on top of it. As Brad Jones came up from that cornerback position to make the stop. And Tess, this is an offense that has struggled the last couple of weeks. They almost went the entire first half last week against Louisville and not score. I mean, it took them until the last three or four minutes of the first half to get on the board. Four receivers, three by one for Jarrett Brown. Flushed up, tries to keep it himself on the ground, and Brown is taken down about a yard short of that line to make by Andre Rebels. But that is a good sign for West Virginia. Jared Brown pulled the ball down and took off. The last three weeks ago, since he had that concussion, he's been a little bit hesitant to take off and run and has tried to hang in the pocket. So Scott Gislowski is a punt to the very dangerous Marty Gilliard. Gilliard calls for the fair catch, and he settles in at the 27, a 45-yard punt for Kozlowski. And here's the new kid in town that has forced college football intelligentsia to scramble for their media guides, sophomore quarterback Zach Kolaris, and his mom and dad want everyone to know that that's how you pronounce the last name, <laughs> Kolaris. <laughs> Six inches shorter than Tony Pike, but he's fast rod. He's a playmaker. He had 555 yards of total offense last week against UConn as Tony Pike, the one-time Heisman hopeful, looks on. Calaris has a lot of athleticism. Calaris back to pass. Gets it to Gilliard. And Gilliard. To the 34-yard line, a gain of seven. The impact players brought to you by KFC for Cincy. Well, starts with Tony Pike. We will see him tonight. He has to be careful, we're told, with the left arm. Embrace himself, protect himself on falls. That guy, incredibly underrated. A great wide receiver and a great kick returner. Had a 100-yard kick return last year against these guys. And Armin Benz has really come on on the other side. Isaiah Pede with a... Good run for first down yardage. He replacing senior running back Jacob Ramsey, who's out with a mild foot sprain. That was a gain of seven by the sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. And this is an offense that really believes in, in kind of passing first to set up the run. And the challenge for West Virginia is to do away with the passing game early. Since he wasting no time, P. Another good, strong run. Gain of six. He was finally taken down by Brandon Hogan. And Tess, you know, this offense is as explosive as any offense in the country. I mean, look, look at what they've done. I mean, total yards, almost 500 yards a game, number three in the country, 40 points a game, throwing for more than 300 yards a game. 711 yards of offense a week ago. Second and four. Polaris. Plenty of time downfield and unable to hold on to it was D.J. Woods. Yeah, if you're going to play well defensively against this offense, you have to get a pass rush with your defensive line, and you have to be physical with the receivers. They're quick and aggressive. The ball comes out in a hurry. You have to hit them when you can. D.J. Woods gets separated from the ball here. As that looked like that was Hogan who came over and got him. Brandon Hogan, 22. So it makes for a third and four for Kolaris. P. 
First down and a bit more. Bearcats cross midfield. A seven-yard gain. Good block that time by the tight end, Ben Gadouli. Yeah, and, and pressure from the right side for West Virginia, bringing a bit of a blitz. And that's the dilemma with Cincinnati. I mean, they pick up the blitz. They see it very well at the line of scrimmage, and they adjust away from it, which makes it hard for you to blitz them. Right. Right through the middle. Nice cut by P. And he is ridden down at the 28-yard line. Robert Sands, the safety, got to him, but 17 yards for Isaiah P. A great block, and they just run the power play. They pull the guard from the left side to the right side and watch the hole open up. There it is. Nice big hole. You see it as if you're the safety trying to come over and make that play as P gets into the secondary. Play clock only down to about 16 15, and they're snapping the ball. Polaris now shifting Pete over to the left side. Play action. Polaris, he's dangerous with the wheels, airs it out, and overthrows the intended target. He was looking for Armand Pins, who's become a very dangerous one on one threat downfield in recent weeks. Yeah, and Polaris has that new dimension to the offense. He has that ability to get to the edge, to get out of the pocket, and to threaten you with a run or to throw on the run. And that's something that Tony Pike doesn't have in his arsenal. He has just burst onto the scene in relief of Tony Pike. It's hard to believe. Now. A lot of guys didn't recruit him. Talk about that in a minute here. Polaris trying to make something of it. And he does with his tight end, Gadouli who fights his way just inside the 10 yard line. Oh, you see he made that play with his feet when he threatened the defense to the right side. Then you saw a guy out of the secondary come up. Watch what happens. He comes up and now wide open right there. And now inside the red zone, entering the game is Tony Pike. Ron, what's the thought here? Well, they want to get him in when the field is short. He's a big guy, sees it well. Interesting decision. Tony Pike back to action. How about that? Welcome back, Tony Pike. Touchdown, Bearcats, Armand Bins. Took a little time off, Rod, but nothing's changed. <laughs> but look, he's a big, tall quarterback. Sees down the middle of the field very well. Something that you don't quite get with the six-foot-tall Kolaris. Nice and open, drills it. As does Jake Rogers with the extra point. So Kolaris brings him down the field, and in the one-time Heisman hopeful caps it. Bearcats up early here, seven zip. Armand Bins and the Cincy offense up seven zip early on here. Six straight games with a touchdown now for Bins. What a return for Pike. And Rodgers will just take a knee. And now Devine's going to trot out there and see if it's a go again. And then they're going to give it a test here and see yeah. if they get out of Devine early on. That first slip was when he tried cutting on his left with the left ankle. First down again, play action for Brown again. A little screen for Sanders, and Sanders unable to shake free, just gets past the line of scrimmage. And as Brandon Mills was able to secure the speedy Sanders. See, and the missing part of this offense right now is Jared Brown having big plays. He's a guy that can hurt you with his arm, and he can really run. And they just need to get him involved in the run game. Here's Devine. Makes that one cut and a gain of three. You know, when you look back and study West Virginia, you, you see that 50% of their offense comes from Devine and Sanders. And the last week, week and a half, that hasn't been the case. So they've been searching for a way to build up those numbers. 
And Bill Stewart sees Devine trot out here on third and six. Five receivers for Brown here. Has time, and that's going to be short of a first down as Tyler Urban, the big tight end, just gets four on the play. Good defensive play by J.K. Schaefer. Well, this is dangerous territory for West Virginia. The crowd gets into it. There's already seven on the board for Cincinnati, and they may be giving up decent field position here. It, it can become an issue if that Cincinnati offense starts to roll right away. Marty Gilliard. All-time leading receiver, but also always a threat in special teams. Had a 100-yard kickoff return last year against West Virginia. Kozlowski to punt for the second time tonight. And this takes a bounce, hit a West Virginia player right there at the 21-yard line. So the West Virginia offense yet to get in gear since he enjoying a touchdown lead early. Ryan Kelly was talking to us yesterday. The good times here. I mean, Rod, when it's going well, it's going well. And no matter who he throws out there at quarterback, success. We already saw it tonight as Pike came in at the end of that last drive. But back now to Colaris. And wide open over the middle is Adrian Robinson. Loses the ball at the end of it. West Virginia football. <laughs> Well, Sydney Glover jumping right on it. Well, Adrian Robinson came across the middle after number one Gilliard cleared it out for him. And that opened things up. And Keith Tandy came in and knocked the ball out. There's Tandy, number eight, coming over, taking the shot on the big tight end. Hey, Robinson goes at about 250 pounds, and Tandy only about 190. Sidney Glover was quick to jump on it. Fewest total turnovers in major college football. That was their first lost fumble of the year. That's why they're unbeaten. Devine right up the middle for four. I mean, think about that, Rod. Here we are with a team 9-0, and and that right there was their first lost fumble of the year. Yeah, they've been just amazing the way they've taken care of the football. Just their fifth turnover. Only four picks on the season. Robinson's a young man who they say the light bulb has finally gone on. But coughs it up that time. Second and six now. Brown play action. Looking downfield and able to complete that ball to Brad Starks. Yeah. And did you see that throw? Hey, that's part of the talent skill, the talent level he has that we're talking about. He's got great feet, he can run, but that arm is something. He needs to run more to help his team, but that arm is amazing. He threw that thing on a line. And now speeding things up is Brown. Four receivers for West Virginia. Devine trying to get to the outside. And he was ridden down by Brad Jones, a gain of five for Noel Devine. He looked okay to me on that run. You know, that, that move to the outside and the speed cutting to his right, he looked better going to his right than going to his left. You know, he struggled his last couple of ball games. They want to get him loose tonight if possible, bad ankle and all. Well, Stewart right there, he said, we just haven't been as explosive recently. Devine's a player that can change that in a hurry. Couldn't get to the edge that time. Taken down immediately by Aaron Webster, the senior free safety, one of those lead by example kind of guys. Yeah, he's one of the, the, the only starter back from last season. Ten new starters on defense for these guys. And you'll see how they flush everything to the outside. Just push it out right where he's waiting. That's the idea behind their defense. Spill it to the outside. Five receivers, three by two on third and six. Brown complete and a first down and a bit more from Jock Sanders. Sanders. He just scooted ahead. Andre Reynolds in the tackle. Well, I'll tell you, 
if Brown gets rolling, and he can be a very streaky quarterback, he gets rolling, we're going to have a shootout. And sometimes Virginia finding some life after that turnover. Ryan Kelly thinking about what happened to his defense perhaps a week ago when UConn was able to put up 45 points, and now West Virginia finding things a bit easy on this drive. Divine inside the 10. You know, the teams that have done well against that defense are teams that are power running teams. I mean, UConn pounded the ball inside. Now, Fresno State, with Ryan Matthews, pounded the ball inside. West Virginia doesn't really have that power pounding back. That's not what they are. No. They can run the ball, but not in that kind of fashion. No. no they're an edge running team. Empty backfield, Brown in the shotgun, three by two, five receivers here on second and six. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. Looking to tuck it himself, Jarrett Brown. Shifty move, touchdown! He's the guy that we've talked about who's got to do some things with his feet. Shifty, big quarterback. Does he break the plane? Uh, hard to tell from that angle. It looks like he probably was there. I'd go with the official on the field on that call. Tyler Bittencourt adds the extra point. It started with the first fumble loss of the year for the Bearcats. Robinson coughed it up. West Virginia jumped on it, and then Brown took it home. Just a little L of yellow tucked in among the red here at Nippert Stadium. This stadium goes back to 1923. The field that they're playing on, this very spot they've been playing on, since 1901 a lot of history here at Cincinnati and now new history being made as they are 9 and 0 and number five in the country the re-kick by Bittencourt Gilliard here he goes Marty Gilliard great show Polaris now changing things up here 49 yard line they start this drive. Isaiah P hit hard in the backfield by Robert Sands. A loss of three. Now you brought it up with Zach Kolaris in terms of under recruited. He was a good baseball player at Steubenville High School, but the only other football offer he had was from Kent State. Yeah, West Virginia looked at him, wanted him, but figured he was going to play baseball so Bill Stewart said they passed on him because of that now here's Polaris and that's what he can do so well let's check in with our Quint Kesnick Quint Joe I, I spoke to Zach before the game about you know why such little interest in terms of football recruiting he said he verbaled to Kent State for baseball as a junior and that threw a lot of teams off the scent said Dayton was one of the only teams that really recruited him for football played on the baseball team here he says he still wants to play baseball but his scholarship is is in the sport of football yeah, and Quint, we got a chuckle <laughs> yesterday when we talked to Brian Kelly about his future as a baseball player. He said, I don't think so if he's my starting quarterback. <laughs> Third and 17. Downfield and thrown out of bounds. He was looking for his reliable target, Marty Gilliard, so it'll bring about a fourth down. What did Kelly say about his baseball playing? He said, well, he's not hitting the curveball. He's at 209, <laughs> so he's probably going to be on the football field. He me. said, maybe if they have a double header and they can use him <laughs> and we're not doing anything for two weeks. I have a feeling you're looking at the starting quarterback for the next few years here in Cincinnati, not a baseball player. So Jake Rogers to punt. Jock Sanders back deep for the Mountaineers. And this is Brandon Hogan who actually backs up and gets the fair catch. Option to the near side. And Brown is wrapped up immediately. John Hughes, the reserve defensive end with the tackle. You know, this West Virginia team has a lot of pride. 
You know, this is the team that used to be the gold standard in the Big East until last year when Cincinnati knocked them off. And now everybody's just conceding, apparently, Cincinnati, West Virginia said, hey, hold on, wait a minute. We're not done yet. Final seconds here of the first quarter. And the clock will just run out. And coming up, hey, Rod, Dad gave us the keys to the Cadillac. Boy, did we enjoy this. <laughs> Rod and I took the direct TV drive to the national championship bus out for a spin. It stormed the dorm with a group of Cincy students out at Calhoun Hall. They're set to light up the night. Storm the dorm coming your way. The direct TV bus was on hand here yesterday to witness the Catabolts biomedical engineering program at the University of Cincinnati. This is their first class project. They form teams, the Bearcat Catapults. They launch footballs at their professors. They describe it as a team building event. I describe it as just a lot of fun and a way to blow off class. Yeah, but it yeah. looked great. But what if you hit your professor? Does that hurt your grade? Probably. Bearcat out there. Got ourselves a 7-7 game here in Cincinnati. The engineers supporting their Bearcats. Second and eight now for Jarrett Brown. Noel Devine flanked in the backfield with him. Here's Devine. Couldn't get free. All week long here, we've enjoyed having the DirecTV drive to the national championship bus. There it is parked outside of oh. our blimp shot. Love also a bus. good place to hang out on oh. a nice leather couch before you do a game oh, ride. Love that bus. Love that bus. And I guess it's going to make its way over to Pittsburgh tomorrow. The big game, Notre Dame and Pitt will uh, get after each other tomorrow, and the bus will be there for that. Pitt and Notre Dame, 8 o'clock tomorrow on ABC. Third and 12 now. Four receivers, two by two. Brown. Running out of options, flips it forward, and that's complete for a first down and more to Arnett. Still on his feet. Just making something happen was Jarrett Brown. That's what Coach Stewart wanted out of him this week. Yeah, and he's getting it. He's getting it. He is playing like it's a sandlot game, playing freely. Watch him here. Almost crosses the line of scrimmage. Buys more time, though. He almost crossed that line. Making plays with his feet. Brown now. Here's Devine with a blocker out in front. And he's down close to the 35-yard line. Taken down by Demetrius Jones, the former quarterback at Notre Dame. And Brown had to be the guy tonight to trigger the offense. He's played much better tonight than he has the last two or three weeks. Eight of ten, 90 yards, and he hasn't been afraid to tuck the ball down and run. Did that for an eight-yard touchdown run to tie this game up. Devine. Nowhere to go. Good play by Andre Revels, the middle linebacker, the inside linebacker, the senior. How about the dilemma that Stewart talked to us about in getting a player back from concussion? He said, you got the medical people to tell you he's ready. The player wants to play. But when you're evaluating football-wise, you can see he's maybe not quite the same. Yeah, he said, sometimes I can tell something's lingering in there, just his ability to react quickly. But tonight it looks like a clear-headed Jarrett Brown who's quick to make decisions and just play his style of game. Exactly. Clark, first down and a lot more. Hello, end zone, Ryan Clark. Thirty-seven yard touchdown run by the big guy. Well, Tess, we talked about it. Teams with success against this defense run right at them. And that time they got their big back in there and ran at them. Court adds the extra point. 
the question mark of the Cincy defense. West Virginia has the answer. Run right through them. 14-7 Mountaineers. And the robotic approach by West Virginia. Just run right at them on that last drive, and Ryan Clark did so with a 37-yard touchdown to go up 14-7. Here's Gilliard. Marty Gilliard still on his feet, crosses midfield, and he sets up the Bearcats offense very well. Let's go back to the touchdown, though, Tess. They went big, two tight ends. Timmerman is a tackle who's playing tight end. They block it there and then lead with the fullback. They're going heavy and bring in also Clark, who's a 230-pound fullback playing tailback. They got all their big guys in there, and they ran right at them in that third and short, much like Connecticut did last week. Glad you're with us here in Cincinnati. Big game. Maybe the game of the weekend. Number 25, West Virginia, and number five, the undefeated Cincinnati Bearcats with hopes of so much this year. The long shot of a national title, a Big East title. BCS up for grabs for both teams. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore and Quint Kesnick with you down on the sidelines. Glad you're with us here. Over the middle and wide open is Bins. Quick strike by Zach Polaris. Uh, and Benz has really come on as a threat in this offense because so many teams double on the other side. Marty Gilliard, number one. And Benz has stepped up you know, to really be a productive receiver. Coach Kelly has seen his emergence recently. He's from Pasadena, California, UCLA and USC. They didn't even sniff at Armand Benz, a rare California product here at Cincinnati. Polaris to Williams. Williams to the 25-yard line. JT Thomas able to get to Williams. Well, this is a few minutes ago. Conference between Pike, Polaris, Kelly, and the quarterback coach trying to make sure they're all on the same, same page. If you're just joining us, Tony Pike, who was the Heisman hopeful, has been out for three and a half games, came into this game earlier through one pass, good for the lone touchdown of the night for the Bearcats. But back to the super soft, the backup who's been brilliant, Polaris. And he gets it to Woods, D.J. Woods. Coverage by Kent Richardson, a gain of 12. How good is that? Throwing, throwing on the move to your left away from his strong arm, his power arm, moving to his left, total accuracy on that throw. That's why people look at him and go, whoa, not much of a drop off next season when Pike is gone. And he's just got an earful from his coach supporting him saying, be smart. In the red zone now, be smart. Polaris has been nearly perfect in relief of Pike this season. Back to what was the original line of scrimmage is Armand Davis. He's handy, was quick to wrap him up. You notice that when Pike came in in the red zone, he threw a touchdown over the middle. And that, indeed he did. Almost everything we see here is outside. Does that have anything to do, Rod, with the six-inch height differential between the two players? Well, I think it's a couple things. I think Pike being 6'6 six, six, can see better uh -huh. over the middle. But also, you've got a young quarterback, and the middle can be dangerous. This is where he's dangerous often. Polaris stays on his feet. And a first down to the three-yard line. First and goal, Bearcats. Yeah, the one thing about Polaris, though, is he is an absolute winner. Went 30 and 0 as a junior and senior in high school, winning two state championships. Outstanding high school baseball player as well. Keith Tandy missing the tackle. The Polaris is so good on the ground. He tries to go up and over. Fighting for the ball. That ball is loose. Chris Neal looked to jump on it, but who knows what's going on in the bottom of that pile. All I know is I saw Robert West Sands. Virginia. Robert Sands, number two, came in there 
when the ball was at its height. And Chris Neal, I think, was in there making the tackle. But Sands came over the top and might have knocked the ball loose. Just when Cincinnati looked like they were going to tie up this game, a little talking to for Isaiah P. Now look for number 90 down low inside. He gets the wrap up there. Here you see him, number 90. That's Neal. And he recovers the ball, it looks like. The previous play is under further review. So the Big East officiating crew with the replay official Donald George will take a look. I mean, this is the type of play that's one of those real swing plays on the scoreboard. Let's look to see where Isaiah Peed was when he reached out the ball. Yeah, if he crossed the plane of the goal line, they call it a touchdown. If he doesn't cross the plane, this ball would be a fumble. That's hard to tell there. That is so close. Well, he reached the ball out. I'm not sure it crossed the plane from that angle, and it looks like he was losing control of it. Yeah, that ball's, ball's not moving. secure, yeah. You can see clearly that ball was not secure when he was trying to reach it out. After further video review, the runner was able to stretch and put the ball across the plane of the goal line before losing possession. It was a touchdown for Cincinnati. Wow! How the about that? Player, please play five, two, six on the game clock. And Rod, I think the reaction here at Nippert is in complete disbelief yes. that that went their way. Oh, absolutely. But celebrate they do. They're ruling that a touchdown by P. Games that's as advertised with a BCS berth on the line for both teams, a Big East title, and of course that unbeaten mark for Cincinnati. Quick. Coach, the call was overruled. Pete fumbles. They reverse it. It's a touchdown. What was what were you thinking? Well, I mean, it's first down, and we're trying to make a play there. We should be more careful with the football. And then we had a drop touchdown pass. You know, we're our own worst enemy right now in terms of, you know, turning the ball over. We just got to go back and take care of the football. If we do that, we'll be fine. We've shown some visuals on the sideline. You, Coach Forrest, the quarterbacks. Now, how do you best describe the communication that exists right now? Uh, you know, we got to do a better job in everything we do. We're, we're coaching hard. We got some guys out there that, um, you know, clearly have to be locked in in what we're doing. But we'll be fine. We, you know, we, we tore to 50 yards at half and 14 points. We just got to take care of the ball. Thanks, Coach. Gets a little intense down there when you're 9-0 and it's a tie ball game. 14-14 here in Cincy. Now let's join Reese, Lou, and Mark back in the studio for the college football halftime report. A look high above Southern Ohio here on this beautiful night. All tied up in this critical Big East game. Glad you're with us here tonight. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. That first half had a little bit of everything. The return of Tony Pike and a lot of controversy. Uh, controversy, but some scoring. And Pike was the guy who really kind of got it started. You know, we didn't expect to see him so soon. Didn't know, came in. One play, one touchdown, 10-yard pass to Armand Benz after Cincinnati's first fumble. Jared Brown showed you the first half he had with this eight-yard touchdown run. And here's your controversy. Isaiah Pede losing the football, apparently, but they, in the replay booth, called it a touchdown. I, I'm not so. I thought that was a fumble. They didn't agree with me. You have a tie ball game at 14-all. Coach Brian Kelly trying to take the Bearcats to 10-0 for the first time in school history. And the young gun, the super sub, sophomore Zach Kalaris. He has been so strong in recent weeks in for the injured Tony Pike, who came back tonight when they were in the red zone. One flick of the ball, one touchdown. And what will develop here in this second half? Here's Gilliard. Marty Gilliard passed the 30 out to the 34. 
First half stats are brought to you by American Airlines. Uh, you see the rushing. Cincinnati being invited by West Virginia to run the football because they're overplaying the receivers. But the big thing, the turnovers. They had a couple of fumbles and also an interception in the first half. And this was a team that has done so well with securing that ball. Coming into tonight, they only turned it over four times. All were interceptions. And then a fumble in the first quarter. West Virginia recovered. It led to a Jarrett Brown touchdown that tied the game at seven. Here's Peed again. Isaiah Peed finally driven down after a gain of four by Sidney Glover. Remember, senior running back Jacob Ramsey is out with a midfoot sprain. He's in a boot for about two to three weeks. He's the physical inside runner, but Peed has acquitted himself well tonight, Rod. Yeah, absolutely. And I like I like the West Virginia game plan. They're telling Peed, you're going to have to beat us. We're not going to let Marty Gilliard or Benz on the outside beat us. Peed just runs over a defender for a first down. Quick. Joe. Joe, I spoke to Bill Stewart, who was energetic and positive. First, let's start with the defense. Communication, the key between linebackers and the secondary. Happy that they've only given up one big play. Big play. Turn into the offense. Says we're going to continue to pound the rock, pound the rock. We'll go jumbo. You'll see a lot of tight end sets. You'll see the fullback. It has worked so far, and so has this. P just bullying his way for a gain of nine. So. Wynn catches up with Bill Stewart who says hey we're going to run the ball and early on here Isaiah Peed running the ball well. Well for those who've watched Cincinnati all season this is an aberration. You don't expect to see you know Peed carry the ball that much and have over 100 yards rushing this soon. You know part of that is because Jacob Ramsey is out but the other part is that West Virginia is double covering the wide receivers and saying you want to win tonight Cincinnati you're going to have to run the football. They're doing it well to open up this second half. First down and inside the 40 yard line for Isaiah Peed, who went to the same high school as the two time Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin and topped all of his rushing records back in Columbus. Yeah, and and Peed is explosive. He's a guy that can give you the big play, you know, more so than Jacob Ramsey. Not that Ramsey isn't missed, Ramsey is an inside runner. Pounds in between the tackles, but Pete can give you the big play. This is little Darren Williams out of the backfield for a gain of five. You know, Tess, there is an ego and emotional part to this game. And when you're Cincinnati and you're used to throwing the ball and you're used to Gilliard having a big game, it can be frustrating when your offense isn't doing that. And that that may throw them off and make things harder for them. So the West Virginia plan is a good one so far. Great teams have the ability to adapt. Kolaris pressured complete to Bins. Coverage from Brandon Hogan. But Bins with an 11-yard gain. You can see the mismatch out there with Bins on almost anybody. I mean, he's 6'4", over 200 pounds, had Brandon Hagen on him, and Hagen goes at about 5'10", 5'9". It's a little bit of a mismatch. Ben's just one of those guys who can go up and get it. Told you not heavily recruited out of Southern California. He kind of fell into their lap sent them a tape and he's had a breakout season. Polaris plenty of time Woods inside the 10 and the Bearcats are knocking on the door a 22 yard pitch and catch. There's Woods catching the ball, clearly getting his left foot down before going out of bounds. There's the catch. Left foot, left arm. Good catch. Aaron Williams, really the running back, and Tony Pike is back in the game at quarterback. Pike. To the end zone. Overthrown. He was trying to get it to Ben Gaduli. So for the second time tonight, six foot six, Tony Pike comes in when they're deep down there in the red zone. Yeah, and he looks over the middle. 
I mean, he's got that ability at 6-6 to see clearly down the middle of the field, put the ball right on the money. Guduli could not come up with it. And Pike is going to stay in here. Now, West Virginia will bring pressure. They will do it on occasion down here. They're trying to minimize the risk of injury to Pike. Three and a half games removed from surgery. Pike throws that one away to the corner of the end zone. It'll bring up a third down. He was looking for P. And the issue again with Pike isn't taking a hit on the forearm. It is protecting himself if he's knocked to the ground or if he falls. In fact, he practiced falling this week so he wouldn't have an issue. And, and was very serious about it, saying, I have to learn how to fall properly just in case. Trying to protect that left forearm. Third and goal. Pike out of the gun. Looking for Woods. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Tony Pike. Boy, you talk about making the most of a situation. Two touchdown passes tonight for Pike with just that limited exposure to game time. Oh, and he put some mustard on that ball. Wood had no choice but to catch it. That ball was thrown so hot, it would have gone right through him. And that was an absolute bullet he drilled in there. Jake Rogers puts Cincinnati up by seven. Tony Pike, two completions tonight, both for touchdowns. The kid is back. Pike to Woods, up a touchdown. Not far from Old Man River here in Cincinnati, Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick with you. 21-14, Bearcats on top. Big Rogers to kick. Austin in his own end zone and unable to get it out to the 20. Here's a guy that has been heating up better than expected. That is Noel Devine. Remember, he came into the night with question marks based on the ankle injury from a week ago. Was limited in practice earlier in the week, but out here performing tonight. Question the ankle, but not how tough he is. He has been leading this offense in ball control offense. What, 18, 19 carries already for him in this ball game with a bad ankle? And mixed in the big guy. Ryan Clark, who had a 37-yard touchdown run. But Devine has been carrying the load. Here he goes again. Another first down for West Virginia. 11 yards for Devine that time. And these have been tough yards for Devine. You know, he hasn't reeled off a 50, 60-yarder on the outside. He's lowering the shoulder, using all of his 175, 76 pounds you know, to pick up a first down. The other thing with Divine Rod is that he's made a point to go out there and show that he's matured as a young man and take more of a leadership role with this team. Played his high school football down there in Fort Myers. Comes from a challenging background. Raised by his grandmother and family friends who took him in. Didn't uh, Deion Sanders try to adopt him at Did some Deion point? Deion Sanders yeah. was acting as a sort of mentor for him at one point during high school and now a junior at West Virginia and the leader of this offense as he gets tended to by his quarterback a little help from his friend Jared Brown he's only 175 pounds but he can bench press 400 pounds he's a tough guy strong guy here he goes again crossing midfield and Rod, think about momentum here. How Cincinnati had that opening drive in the second half to go up a touchdown, then had it again. And now West Virginia defense answers, and now West Virginia offense crosses midfield. And Noel Devine pounding the football. Look at his last couple of ball games. 49-yard average tonight, 76 on 21 carries. The game plan, do something West Virginia normally doesn't do. Pound the ball inside, and Devine is doing it at 175 pounds. Sanders and Austin now flanking Brown. Here's Sanders. 
close to that first down mark. A gain of five taken down by Alex Daniels. I still think they need to mix in a little bit of Jared Brown running with the football. And he's the biggest running back they have at 225. And the unbeaten stay that way. Fourth quarter coming up. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessator. Quint Kesnick down on the sidelines. The start of the fourth quarter and the number five team in the country. Unbeaten Cincinnati, only up a touchdown. Sanders this time. Stopped for no gain. Brandon Mills getting in the mix. He's an undersized nose tackle. Only listed as five foot ten, 260 and change, playing right in the middle. Yeah, he's very quick, but quickness may not help you if somebody gets their hands on you. 300 pounder gets his hands on you. That, that's that's a problem. Sanders, the lone back on second and 11. Nowhere to go at all. Andre Revels was just waiting on him. Yeah, they brought him inside on a Ron Blitz. Revels just came right up the middle, looking exactly for that play. They, they just ran the blitz and let him come inside to try to help stop the run. You see him just fill right there. All alone, nobody to block him. 11 tackles for Revels tonight. So the running game sputters for a moment. And now it'll be on Jarrett Brown on third and 12. Can he get a block? Yes, Jarrett Brown. Big play, Mountaineers. First down, key block came from tight end Tyler Urban. Yeah, and Jarrett Brown helped set up the block by Tyler Urban by the way he used his feet the way he got himself back out to the outside and this time he doesn't hesitate he decides right now to tuck the ball and take off and that's one of the things we've been looking for and talking about with him all night making key plays with his feet a long sustained drive trying to tie this game against number five Sanders met at the 25 yard line Rebels again his 12th tackle of the game. What a night for Andre Rebels vocal leader of that group and playing on a bad leg hurt his right knee missed all of spring. But he has stepped up here. There has not been a single pass on this drive 11 plays for West Virginia. They've done it on the ground every step of the way. Now to pass. And he just burns that into the ground. Was looking for Ryan Clark. This game is so important. Remember, everybody knows about the big story with Cincinnati. Number five, unbeaten. But Rod, West Virginia is playing for a title, too. Yeah, West Virginia is still involved in this thing. Pitt is still involved. How about that? And Pitt, you know something? You talk about assistant coach of the year, Frank Signetti. Undoubtedly. What he's done with quarterback Bill Stahl and a freshman running back, wow. He had to get a lot of votes for assistant coach of the year. Bill Stewart hoping his team can convert here and tie this game. BCS first will be decided in these final weeks of the Big East. Sanders. What do you make of that play call Rod on third and nine. Wow. I thought if they were going to run that play they ran the power pulled the guard and tried to get in behind uh, the guard and power people power Cincinnati like lots of folks have done. You're thinking running two plays. That's what they had to be thinking I thought and it looks like now they are going to go for it on fourth down. They were they were thinking two plays. Now you got five minutes to go here. You can kick a field goal. You know, give yourself a lead. Not a lead, but give yourself a chance to come back later. Fourth and eight. Pressure. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. Jarrett Brown felt the pressure from Curtis Young. 
a desperation heave to the end zone and Jared Brown is very slow to get up as that ring of red celebrates the defensive stop. West Virginia moved the ball down the field but then came up short on fourth down. 523 to go Cincy ball up a touchdown when we return. A lot of folks around here worried about Brian Kelly being mentioned as a possible Notre Dame coach in the future. That has been the buzz. He says it comes up every year. It's good. It means you're wanted. But he's not going to deal with the job rumors until after the season. Hey, they're undefeated and thinking BCS. Isaiah P cutting back. And here he goes. Watch out for Isaiah P. All the way down to the 32 yard line where Brandon Hogan finally chased him down. And that was all Isaiah P. And he cut this thing back and outran the contain to make a big play. Right now he stopped up and he peels it all the way back. Bad angles, nobody on the backside. And he's able to take this and make it a big play. We talked about his explosive ability. You saw it there. 43 yard run. He had a 52 yard run earlier tonight. Pete now to the far side, down close to the 30 yard line. The man on the right by Nate Sowers. 175 yards. Remember the senior running back Jacob Ramsey is out with a foot sprain. Well, and also West Virginia said your receivers will not beat us tonight. Let's see if your running back can do it. And Pete has been responding. Zach Kolaris. Not the night he had last week against UConn, but all the same, trying to close out a win here and stay unbeaten. He hit hard, but another first down for Cincinnati. Manny Pacquiao, one of the true global stars of sports. He is like Elvis and the Beatles wrapped up in one down in Southeast Asia. And this time wrapped up is P. Garrett Williams, the ball carrier. Well, when it's come to the red zone, Cincinnati's gone to Tony Pike. And he's responded with two touchdown passes. Armis Ben for the first one. And then DJ Woods for the second one. Pike has not come on the field yet. As they are just outside the 20 yard line. He doesn't have his helmet on yet. He could show up for that. Two completions, two touchdowns. <laughs> 321 to play. Polaris. Does the smart thing, trying to stay in bounds, and then forced out by Sidney Glover, a gain of five. Well, Kolaris and everyone else reminded that they're in their four-minute offense. You want to stay in bounds. You want to try and run the football, run clock, get first downs. If you get a score, great. But four-minute offense, you want to make sure you bleed that clock. Ryan Kelly. Trying to bring this one in for a nice safe landing. Third and seven. Flag is down. Polaris. First down. Looking for the end zone. And they're ruling him out. Just inside the two. But we'll check on the flag. Illegal shift. On the offense, two minute motion when the ball was snapped, five yard penalty, first down. How's that filter on Brian Kelly you were talking about? <laughs> oh no. Oh, there's not a whole lot of filter there. He How's tells that working out? Exactly what he thinks. So it takes back the gain by Kolaris and backs him up even more. Remember, that was third down there. Yeah, and, and that will put them at the 22. So right now, if they didn't gain another yard, they'd be looking at about a 39 to 40 yard field goal. Not necessarily a gimme. And West Virginia 
would still have an opportunity to go down and tie the ball game. You say roll the dice defensively. Absolutely. Get after it here on third and 12. Five receivers. Polaris all alone in the gun. Line to make is the 10. And they see the pressure and they see the man to man coverage now. He's going to try to do it himself, and he is wrapped up right away just inside the 20-yard line. So it'll come down to Jake Rogers, the junior place kicker for Coach Kelly, who earlier tonight, heading in this same direction, missed a 34-yarder, and it wasn't even close. This was earlier tonight. Yeah, and this one's a little bit better for him because it's straight on. He's not on the hash mark. It's a little deeper at about 37 yards. And now Rodgers. Made up for it, didn't he? So a 10-point margin as Rodgers is able to put it through. Well, Brian Kelly did the right thing on third down, calling for the quarterback sneak, essentially a quarterback draw, and getting the ball centered for this field goal attempt by Rodgers. Made it easy for him, straight down the pike, not a problem, and how about Tony Pike? Excited about getting that done. Austin now. And here goes Austin. Good return out across the 35. Just over two minutes to play here. Desperation time for the Mountaineers. They've been in this game every step of the way, and now the margin to 10 after that field goal. Brown downfield, and he just threw it over the stride of Brad Starks. Coverage from Aaron Webster on the play. That was almost a one play touchdown because Webster tried to make a play on the ball and he comes underneath. The ball's over his head. If he doesn't get a little bit of that ball, it's in stride. Oh, that's a touchdown. See if they can hit the jackpot this time. Brown. Trying to dance for freedom. And does have his man this time. As Wes Lyons, the big target, with a 21 yard reception. And now West Virginia holding out hope that they can pull off something here late. Well, they have no timeout, so they need to get a score in a hurry. Brown. To Mark Rogers. And Rogers, the freshman running back, quick to get out after a four yard gain. You know, Tess, you almost think about taking a field goal if you get close enough, hitting that, and then going onside kick because you need two scores. Brown, plenty of time. Strong arm and complete. Able to get it to Jock Sanders. And all of a sudden, Jarrett Brown is bringing his team downfield, just slicing through that Cincy defense at this moment. Uh, down the ball, go to second down, stop the clock, or you got to get to the end zone in a hurry here. Crossing route this time. Yeah, you can't do that. starts. That's just going to kill clock. I mean, that's the worst yeah. reception you're going to come up with. That, that's what I was saying. You can't throw that pass. You have to take your shot to the end zone, or you need to spike the ball and stop the clock and gather. No timeouts. Arnett. Did he get out of bounds? Yes, to the three-yard line, 49 seconds to go. But here's the problem. You spend all your time trying to get the touchdown. You won't have any time left to get the second score. Mm -hmm. They need points, and they need them fast. Brown turns away from it. Now facing the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. The quick 
strike drive and it ends with Brad Starks in the back of the end zone. 39 seconds to go and it's going to come down to an onside kick. What a throw. What a throw. We talked about his arm. That was an absolute dart. He's rolling to his left. Lions is calling for it. Starks is calling for it. And he puts it right on the money. What a throw. So don't go anywhere quite yet. Bittencourt makes it a three point ball game. Tony Pike, the veteran leader, Bill Stewart, who's hoping for a miracle finish here. And Jarrett Brown, who came down the field effortlessly with his Mountaineers to make it a three point game. And now Josh Leiter with the onside kick. How will it break? And Bins secures it. The good hands team, Armand Bins, who goes 6'4, 200 pounds, has those strong hands as a star receiver. And that was a big play on special teams. Where you put it, where the ball was caught, first down, Cincinnati. They're off sides. They'll just put the ball in Cincy's hands. Well, Bins goes up high for this. They didn't get the bounce they wanted. They wanted a second opportunity, but that ball went too far and too high, and Benz was in the perfect spot, went up high, great hands, protected it. A simple knee to close out the night, and now the road ahead for the unbeaten Bearcats ride. Uh, you see Illinois, they get a break before they have to face Illinois and then pit on December 5th for probably all the marbles in the Big East. Brian Kelly amid job rumors that he could be held elsewhere. Right now all he's concerned about is guiding his team to another BCS berth, a Big East title. And he does so with two talented quarterbacks in Polaris and Pike. Noel Devine gave it his all tonight. Bill Stewart's troops tried to close in late, but our final score is 24-21. And for more on this game, you can join Rod and me on ESPN News for a post-game extra. Coming up next here on ESPN2, it's the MLS Cup Playoffs Western Conference Championships. Unbeaten 10-0 Cincinnati for the first time ever 10-0 to start a season. For Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick, and our entire hardworking crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.